A new version of Revit, Revit 2025, has just been released and in this video we're going to be covering all of the interesting and exciting new features. Now, unlike last year, we don't have any new big tools or features. However, there have been some big updates to all of the existing features that I'm excited to share. We're going to start with my top five new features, then we're going to be moving on to the architecture features, then the TopoSolid updates, and there are many. Then we're going to be moving to other topics like documentation, annotation, structure, and so on. Finally, there will be an honorable mention section where I'm just going to mention some updates without going into a step-by-step -step tutorial. Let's go! For my top five new features, I have to start off with disable and enable wall and wrappings by instance in Canvas. This will greatly improve detailing. Moving on to second place is sheet collection, so for better sheet organization. Then we have the array tool update, so families will be able to flex to one or zero elements, and I've been waiting for this feature forever. Then we have the excavate tool in Topo Solids. Basically, building pads are back sort of. And then finally, we have annotation alignment. This will be a huge time saver. Now, before we jump into Revit and start this step-by-step -step tutorial, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, balkanarchitect.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be. And I'm excited to announce that there will be a completely new beginner to intermediate course released very soon. Uh, if you get it now, you will get the update. And if you already have it, you will get the update for free. So don't worry about that. And if you get the beginner course now, you will get it at a cheaper price because the new updated one will cost a bit more. So if you want to lock in the lower price, get it now. So now without any further ado, let's jump straight into the new Revit 2025. The first architectural update that we're going to be seeing is the option to enable or disable layer wrapping at ends of walls in the actual canvas. So here we have a couple of walls in the floor plan view. If I select this wall, what you'll notice is that here I have this button that allows me to disallow wall and wrapping. And as you can see, now it's turned off, now it's turned on. And we can do that for the rest of these. So here I can turn it on, here I can turn it off, and I can manually adjust this by instance for any of these walls. One thing to note is that for this to be able to work, you do need to go here into edit type, and then for the layer wrapping at ends, it has to be set to either exterior or interior. Otherwise, if it's set to none, it will not display that option. And here where that's checked on, it does display that option. So this is just something to keep in mind. Next, we have features for auto join and lock when creating walls. So here, if I start the wall command, what you'll notice that is that under placement, we have auto join and auto join and lock. So what this actually means is that we can use this when using new walls to add layers to existing ones. This is a common practice. And here I have this ceramic tile wall, which I want to use to add additional layers to existing walls. And here, if I do it without having any of these checked on, let's see what happens. So I'm just going to place it like this, hit the escape key. And what you'll notice is basically these are not joined together. It's going through the door. It shouldn't. And we have these uh, double uh, wide lines. However, if I decide to use auto join, what this will do is if I place this here, and then hit the escape key. As you can see, this automatically joined this new wall to the existing one. It's now opening where the opening should be, and we no longer have these double uh, double tick lines. So as you can see here, we have one tick outline, and here we have two. And then we have the auto join and lock, and let's use that here. So for example, if I add another wall here, what will happen is it will automatically be joined as you can see, but also if I select it, you can see this one is locked in place. This one isn't, or these two aren't. So if I move this wall, these will stay in the same place. If I move this wall, the new wall that they've added will move alongside it. 
Now let's talk about curtain wall mullions. So, so far in Revit, you could only have one single closed loop as a curtain wall mullion. This is what that would look like in the floor plan view, and it just wouldn't be that impressive. You could add a detail component, but that's only a detail. It's not really a 3D complex mullion. Well, now we can have multiple closed loops. So I've created this interesting mullion. I've loaded it in and now let's try to apply it. So what I'm going to do is just select one of these mullions. Let's unpin it, go into edit type. And now I'm just going to duplicate this one and call it new. Okay. And then for the profile, let me add my new profile, which I have created Hit apply. Okay. There we go. This is what that looks like. And as you can see here, this is what that mullion looks like. It has this perfect profile. And if I apply a section box to this, you can see here, if we zoom in, this mullion obviously looks much more interesting and complex than the rest of them. So this is another improvement for architecture. But before we continue, a quick word from today's sponsor, Convoy. Missing openings, a common issue and a ticket to extra cost and delays. As designs change, openings may become uncoordinating, causing rework on the construction site. Fire safety is no joke. Proper sealing of openings is crucial to halt the quick spread of smoke and fire, safeguarding both lives and your project. When it comes to bearing issues, they're silent, but the impact is loud. So save the project from cracking under pressure with Convoid for Revit. With Convoid, automate the creation of openings with unmatched precision. Swiftly obtain approvals for your openings. Convoid streamlines the process and ensures that all stakeholders are on the same page. And ensure your model stays updated. As project evolves, Convoid keeps every opening accurately coordinated. Convoid supports all linked Revit and IFC models without limitations. Use all 3D elements from any category, including MEP fabrication parts. Download a 14-day free trial by visiting conclass.tech and make sure to explore the comprehensive user guide which includes video tutorials and detailed documentations. Link is in the cards above. Now let's talk about topo solids. They have been improved significantly so we finally have the building pad optionality. Well it's not exactly a building pad however it does the same job so for example, for this uh, topo solid, you can see I have this floor kind of embedded. And let's say this should be kind of the bottom of my building. I can just select the topo solid, go to topo solid shaping and find excavate, select that and then click on this uh, floor and it's basically going to excavate above that floor. Now, if I hit the escape key a couple of times, this is the result. And of course, if this is angled in any way, for example, so uh, if I give it some slope, just like this, well, it's going to work still, and it's still going to excavate. And then we can play around with the height offset if we want, just like this. Now, what's also really cool is that now with any element that's making an excavation like this floor in this case, if I go to the properties, I can find excavation volume for this particular floor. So we can create some uh, really interesting and uh, complex schedules where we know exactly how much we're excavating with each element. And this is going to work with floors, but it's also going to work with other things like walls, building pads, mass uh, in place components and so on. So for example, here I have this wall and if I just use cut geometry, and cut this wall from the topo solid. If I select the wall and go to properties, here we have the excavation volume just for this wall. Now the same thing will apply if we load in a topo surface from an older version of Revit. If we generate a topo solid from that, and then if I select the building pad, it's also going to give us the excavation volume for this building pad. So it's going to work with imports as well. Another really cool functionality that we have with Topo solids is the integration with massing. So here I have a solid mass and I have a mass surface. For both of these, I can use Topo solid by face. I just pick that, I pick out the face go create topo solid and it creates that topo solid. Now for this surface, when I go to create, it's going to give me an error message. Now this can happen sometimes, maybe it's a bit too 
uh, wobbly so basically if you reduce the thickness what I've noticed is then then it's going to work and one thing to keep in mind this isn't a topo solid where you can edit your uh, points and continue working on it you really need to change the underlying mass and then you can select the topo solid and update to face to update to that to those changes made to the massing but it's not going to give you just points which you can adapt moving forward we have some other functionality when it comes to the behavior of railing on topo solids so here if we have a boolean shape like this so if you cut out a topo solid with a void or something like that before you couldn't host railing here now if you go to railing and just place a line going like that select that railing go to pick new host and pick the topo solid as you can see now it's going to use those surfaces made by the void in the topo solid to host your railing and it's going to work we also have new functionality for shafts so if you create a shaft well if you did this before it would simply cut completely through a topo solid if it's just touching it now it's going to cut through it slowly just like this as you can see you can just have a, a small cut like this with a shaft you can adjust it and it's going to cut like this you really have to pull the shaft through the entire topo solid now in order to make it kind of poke through when it comes to editing topo solids we have a couple of really cool improvements so when you go to modify sub elements in this modify sub element view where you can see the points you can also see the contour lines so the contour lines will not disappear in the modify sub elements mode in addition to that if you want to add a point now we have this snap XYZ option so when this is checked on just like this you can snap to pretty much anything you like so you can snap to 3d geometry like this railing to a CAD file with some CAD lines so on and so forth so this is going to make uh, adjusting your topography to some building elements a lot easier and finally for topo solids we now have a smoothing option so if your topo solids sometimes look a bit too jagged now here on masking insight if we go to model site we have topo solid smooth shading so what this will do it will probably slow down your computer a little bit however the topo solids will then appear smoother and nicer uh, keep in mind that this is only a cosmetic change so it's only in view it's only what you're seeing you're not really changing the underlying geometry just how Revit presents it to you now we're going to be moving forward to all of the other new improvements and new features uh, so this one is probably my favorite one overall and that's the ability to have arrays with one or zero so what does this mean well here i have this array family which means that we have the stadium seating in this case and then i have a parameter for the number of seats and this uses an array so i can say okay i want 15 seats if i want more I can say six seats if I want less and so on now so far the array was basically stuck at two as the lowest number now in some cases you might only want one seat so you would previously have to have a completely different family for that uh, to have only one seat now I can set this array to one and it's going to work it's not going to break I can set it to zero and it's also going to work one thing to note here make sure to have some geometry in the family so you can actually select something if you want to go from zero and then up to two or ten, and so on so uh, this is just something that I recommend to have in the family now in the actual family editor itself this is what that looks like so you create an array of two three so on whatever number of course you don't start with zero or one but you create this array and then it's basically going to work so if I go here to family types set this to one hit apply you can see it's going to show still a couple of seats just one is going to be grayed out one is going to be visible if I set this to zero and then hit apply it's just going to have two grayed out seats uh, but the number is going to be set to zero so it does still need two for the actual calculation but it can show zero or one or how many you like if you want to go above that another really cool feature that we finally have is the ability to properly align tags or text 
in your details or any other view. So for example, here I have this call out and we have these tags for the materials. And let's say I want to align them differently. They might be misaligned. Something may have been moved out of place or something like that. So in that case, what you can do is you can just select all tags. You can just Let's say I want to align these up here. I can make a broad selection, go to filter, go to check none, select the tags. In this case, it can be text as well. And then we get the multiple align tools. And here I can simply align this. So if I just want to set it up like this, I can, I can align it the other way around. I can uh, set it up. I don't know, like this, and then set up the distances in between those to be equal and so on. And then you can repeat that for the other ones. So for example, here, check none, material tags, apply. And then here I would first align them on this side, then I would flip around, and then I would kind of spread them out equally. For example, this is what I would do in this case. This will just speed up the process of uh, cleaning up and aligning your text or tags. Moving forward, let's talk about sheets because here we have a huge upgrade. So if I scroll down to sheets, now we have sheet collections. So what is that? Well, if I right click on sheets, I can go to new sheet collection and it's going to create this collection one. I can right click, I can rename it here, and then I can take my sheets and place them in that collection. So I can take multiple sheets and just throw it in that collection. And now if I collapse that collection, I no longer see those sheets until I open it up. And now this is really good because you can categorize sheets in different collections. It's going to appear as a sheet parameter. So if you have a sheet schedule, uh, you can see in which collection each sheet is located. This also allows you to have duplicate uh, sheet numbers. Uh, and then of course, if you're done uh, with a sheet collection, or if you want to remove something, you just can take it out like this. So if I take this out, let's see. There we go. So you're just going to move it to sheets and it's going to remove it from that sheet collection. And then you can, of course, uh, delete the sheet collection if you no longer want to use it. Then we have an improved annual operating schedule for buildings. So if you go here to the manage tab and find MEP settings, if I open up the building operating schedules, now this has been moved here. So now you have this button here as well. So if you open that up, it's going to look like this. So basically we can pick out the, the year schedules, but then we can pick out uh, if we have certain months or dates or weeks that are off. So for example, for schools, um, obviously you're going to have different occupation uh, when occupation of the building when uh, the kids are in the school or when the school is empty. So uh, this has been vastly improved and now you can uh, you can play around with this. You can create uh, new years uh, as kind of options and then you can set this up with way more accuracy. Another big thing is the push from Autodesk to get rid of the option bar. So for example, uh, if uh, I have the circle and I want to scale it, if I go here to scale, uh, before we had an option bar with options for a numerical or a graphical scale, uh, now we have those options here on the ribbon. So in certain instances like this one, uh, those option bar settings are going to be moved on the ribbon. And in other instances, it's going to be moved to the properties palette. So here you can see a table just showing which option bar options are going to be moved uh, to the properties panel and which to the ribbon. Now let's move over to the structural updates. Here I have the example project file from our reinforced concrete template. If you want to check out that template, I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Uh, here, let's open up an isolated view, which I have created here. And here we have some uh, rebar. We want to have rebar sl splicing or overlap. Uh, and here we have uh, an update for that. So if I select this rebar, here I have this splice uh, option. So if I click on splice rebar, I can place uh, basically this plane where I want to splice that rebar. I can use the, uh, I, I can select it and then, oops, let's apply it. 
and then hit enter. Now I can select this and move it if I want. Uh, also, I have the ability to change the uh, splice uh, family type. So I can go with lap splice. We have staggered splice and then we have also end to end splice. And also we have the ability to change the splice position. Is it middle? Is it end two? Is it end one? And yeah the middle one. So these are the options here. We also have the option to remove the splice if we want or use the by length uh, functionality. So here I'm just going to hit finish. Okay, now moving forward, uh, let's go here to this uh, floor plan view. And here we have our rebar, but let's say we don't want to present uh, everything. Here on the presentation panel, now we have the option to select the rebars in the rebar set to show. So I can say, okay, I want to show this one and this one and this one. And then when I hit finish, well, it's going to remove those and it's going to show the rest of them. So we can manually adjust that however we like. Also, when it comes to rebar, we have uh, another option in filters. So here, if I go to the view menu, then go to filters. If I select one of these rebar filters, now we have the option for the maximum bar length. So you can use that uh, option to filter out the, the, the rebars that exceed the maximum rebar length. In addition to that, there's also been an update to help not get some unexpected changes to rebar when you reshape the model elements. Another really cool improvement to rebar is this option where we can select rebar, go to the bending detail. Now this is something that was added in the previous version of Revit. However, now we have the schematic option. So not realistic schematic, which creates this really cool rebar tag that has a schematic design. So as you can see, it just shows here the, the, the rebar shape, uh, just something that you would see perhaps in a, in a table view uh, or in a schedule view. Uh, and here we have all of the dimensions and uh, we can modify this further if we want to just customize it and uh, adjust the size, the height, the width, and so on. So another really cool uh, option that adds uh, just a little bit more detail to our rebar uh, views. So now we're going to be moving to honorable mentions. So these are some improvements that I'm not going to be showing, but they're definitely worth mentioning. So we have the uh, installation speed increase by 20%. So when you install the new Revit, it's going to be quicker. We have a whole new Dynamo uh, where we can actually generate topography using new Topo Solid nodes, which is really cool. We have some minor dark team updates. So shared views palette is now, uh, well, dark. Then we have search in project browser enhancement. Uh, so basically now when you search for a term, uh, if the parent node has that particular term, it's going to show you all child nodes. So you can find things a little bit easier. Then we have a room parameter accuracy improvement. So this is referring to the fact when you're um, just measuring the parameter of a room uh, earlier, it didn't show or measure the walls uh, that that are kind of inside. So if you have a, another room inside of a room, it's not going to show you the perimeter of those inside walls. Well, now that's going to be included and calculated. Then we have the background PDF export. So now when you're exporting to PDF, you have a checkbox where you can check uh, on and have this process run in the background as you continue to work in Revit. We have step file support. So now step files are supported in Revit. We have a whole new improved IFC export category mapping table. Uh, so it's just going to give you more features and options when it comes to mapping the IFC export category. Categories. Then we have supported new horizontal coordinate systems. Uh, these are the coordinate systems that will be supported now. We have monitoring and visualization of coordination model changes. Revit will support the latest version of GBXML v7.03. And those were some of the updates that I wanted to mention in this rapid fire honorable mentions section. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe, 
for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.